One of the most ancient underground temples in Egypt is Osirion. Osirion is located in a place of religious significance, in Abydos, on the western bank of the Nile, north of ancient Thebes. According to ancient myths, Abydos was a place of worship to the god Osiris, lord of the underworld. In the writings of the ancient Egyptian priest Manetho, who was quoted by the ancient historians Josephus, Julius Africanus, and Eusebius of Caesarea, it is asserted that gods were the first and foremost rulers of Egypt. The Shabaka Stone tells us that the mythological founder of the divine dynasty was the creator god Ptah. The center of Ptah's religion was the city Memphis. In the city of Heliopolis, the god Atum was worshipped. Atum was, according to the myths, a descendant of Ptah. Gradually, Atum took on the image of the sun god, Ra. The god Ra Atum became the next divine ruler of ancient Egypt. In place of the aged god Ra came his children, the twins, god of the air and wind, Shu, and the goddess of moisture and rain, Tefnut. Shu ruled in Egypt and married his sister, the lion-headed Tefnut. The children of the royal couple, the sky goddess Nut and the earth god Geb, formed a union in accordance with divine tradition. Although they loved each other deeply, they quarreled among themselves until their father Shu tore their embrace apart and raised the goddess Nut to a great height to maintain order. After Shu, his son, the earth god Geb, began to rule Egypt. The goddess Nut gave birth to the god Osiris, the goddesses Isis and Nephthys, and the god Seth. The cult of Osiris came from the city of Busiris in the Nile River Delta. The Greek historian Plutarch described the god's life on earth in the treatise on Isis and Osiris. Osiris became the ruler of Upper and Lower Egypt after Geb. His sister, the goddess Isis, became his wife according to divine laws. At the start of his reign, Osiris persuaded the people to abandon their uncivilized ways, including cannibalism. He taught them to hunt and fish, to plant useful crops and collect the harvests, to prepare wine and beer, and to dance. With his help, the people learned to make ceramic and stone dishes. In the northeastern part of the Nile Delta, the cult of the god Seth took root. Egyptians associated Seth with chaos, and he had red hair and red eyes. Egyptians treated Seth with fearful reverence. Seti I, a pharaoh of the 19th dynasty, was named in honor of the god, and along with his son Ramesses the Great, revered the god Seth, as shown in bas-relief in the small temple of Abu Simbel. These pharaohs were descendants of the military dynasty from the eastern Nile Delta and were red-haired. Seth, the younger brother of the god Osiris, was married to his sister, the goddess Nephthys. But Nephthys gave birth to a son, 
the jackal-headed god Anubis by Osiris. Seth was jealous of Osiris and organized a conspiracy to kill him. At a festival of the gods, Seth brought out a chest made of precious metals and offered to give the chest to whomever was the right height to fit inside it. All the gods tried to get inside, but only Osiris fit the chest perfectly. When Osiris lay down inside, Seth and his supporters slammed the lid closed and threw the chest into the river with Osiris inside. According to ancient Egyptian mythology, one of the great gods had been killed on earth. Isis found the chest with the body of her husband and hid it in the Nile River Delta. But Seth discovered the body and in fury cut it into 14 parts, scattering them in all the territories of ancient Egypt. Isis and Nephthys found the body parts and gave them to Anubis who put the parts together and embalmed the body. Isis took on the form of the bird Hut and, using magical powers, conceived with the mummy of Osiris. The great divine love between Osiris and Isis was sung of down the centuries, and Isis gave birth to the falcon-headed god Horus. Time passed and the powerful god Horus challenged Seth for his right to the throne of Upper and Lower Egypt. After a long battle with Seth, Horus was proclaimed ruler of all Egypt by Geb. Horus resurrected his father Osiris with the help of the Wajat Eye, which is depicted in many ancient Egyptian reliefs, including those in Osirian. Osiris left the world of the living and became the ruler of the world of the dead. Ancient Egyptians believed in an afterlife in the underworld, where Osiris reigned. From the 4th millennium BC, the ancestors of humanity began to govern Egypt. Ancient Egyptians thought that the head of Osiris was buried in Abydos, possibly even his whole body, so pilgrims brought offerings to the city in clay pots. The sands of Abydos are strewn with shards from those pots. Pharaohs from the first dynasty, who ruled after the god Horus, buried their predecessors in Abydos in the necropolis Um el Kab, the mother of pots. Here, kings from the pre dynastic period were buried, such as Scorpion and Narmer who began the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt. King Narmer started to unite Egypt. On one side of the Narmer palette, he is shown as the ruler of Upper Egypt in a white crown. On the other side, he is the king of Lower Egypt in a red crown. It is possible that Narmer's son, the legendary pharaoh Menes, whose tomb is also located in Abydos, became the next ruler of the two lands of Egypt. The pharaoh's Horus name, Hor Aha, is presented on the serach of this king.
It was the Faromenes who founded the capital of the unified kingdom, the city of Memphis. One of the biggest tombs in Abydos, the site of worship for the cult of Osiris, is the tomb of the pharaoh Jair, son of Menes. During his rule, Egypt expanded its borders and achieved a period of fruitfulness. But at this time, a period of human sacrifice also existed. Wives, servants, and slaves were sent together with a dead pharaoh in order to help him in the underworld. Around the tomb of the pharaoh are an extra 300 tombs for those accompanying him to the kingdom of Osiris. During the rule of the new kingdom, ancient Egyptians believed that Jair's tomb was the burial site of the lord of the underworld, Osiris. They brought clay pots with offerings to Osiris. Many pot shards cover the surface of the necropolis of Umm el kab After Jair, Egypt was ruled by his son, the pharaoh Jet. The pharaoh Den, Jair's grandson, became the next ruler. His grave, in contrast to those of his predecessors, had a tomb and a staircase leading to it. The floor was laid with granite slabs. Den was the first to use the title of King of the Sedge and the Bee, Upper and Lower Egypt. The pharaoh's Horus name means Horus who strikes, as during the time of his rule, Den expanded Egypt's borders to the east and the south. The kings of the first dynasty are buried in the ancient necropolis Umm el Kab. Their names are recorded in seal impressions on the tomb of the pharaoh Ka, and they include Narmer, Aha, Jer, Jet, Den, Anijib, Semerket, and Ka. The list is headed by the god Kenti Amenti, whose name translates as the foremost of the Westerners. The West is the world of the dead, where the sun sets. Kenti Amenti is associated with the lord of the netherworld, Osiris. If the living pharaohs were under the protection of the falcon-headed god Horus, then the deceased kings of Egypt merged with the image of Osiris and their souls traveled to the underworld through Pega the Gap in Abydos, which led to the underground paths of Ro Sitau. The last king of the second dynasty, Kazakemwi, was buried in Abydos. Kazakemwi's grave, now inscribed with sand, is located in the necropolis of Umm el Kab. Kazakemwi once again united Egypt as one empire, suppressing the uprising in the delta. Evidence can be found on the pharaoh's Serek, where his patrons are the gods Horus and Seth. Kazakemwi built a fortress in Abydos from adobe bricks. This grand structure stood for more than 5,000 years. Adobe bricks were also used for the construction of above-ground facilities on the graves, mastaba. The likely successor to Kazakemwi, the pharaoh Sanakt, is suggested to have been buried in such a mastaba in Beit Kalaf. Pharaohs of the Old Kingdom were buried in Saqqara. 
The local necropolis, located close to ancient Memphis, north of Abydos, was under the influence of the falcon-headed god Sokar. One of the well-known pharaohs from the Third Dynasty, Djoser, built the first pyramid tomb, which is also the first step pyramid. The pyramid consists of six mastabas, built one on top of the other. They were made from small stone blocks held together with clay. The architect of Djoser's step pyramid was Imhotep, the high priest of the sun god Ra. If the pharaoh's court was buried in the Mastaba, after death they would travel to the underworld of Osiris. After the necessary funeral rites, the pharaoh, having a divine nature, would ascend to the heavens in the sunboat of the god Ra. Djoser's successors also built step pyramids. The pharaohs Sekemket and Kaaba built their step pyramids close to Saqqara. South of Saqqara and Maidum, a giant step pyramid with smooth faces was erected. Nowadays, the lower steps are covered with sand and rubble. It is believed that the last pharaoh of the third dynasty, Huni, started to build this step pyramid but didn't complete it. Construction was completed on the Maidum pyramid by his son-in-law and founder of the fourth dynasty, the pharaoh Sneferu. Sneferu built two pyramids for his tomb in Dashur, north of Maidum. The first was the Bent Pyramid, which had smooth faces but no steps. During the construction of this pyramid, the incline of the faces had to be reduced because of the risk of its collapse. But as well as the bent pyramid, the pharaoh ordered the construction of the first true pyramid with smooth faces, the red pyramid. The name comes from the limestone blocks used to build it, which gave the pyramid a reddish hue. Sneferu's descendants, the pharaohs of the fourth dynasty, started to erect their own pyramids on the Giza Plateau, not far from Heliopolis, the sacred city of the sun god Ra, which lies on the outskirts of modern-day Cairo. The Giza Plateau is thought to be the gates of Ro Satau, the beginning of the entrance to the underworld of Osiris. Ancient Egyptians called the necropolis on the Giza Plateau Per Usir Neb Ro Satau, which means the house of Osiris, lord of Ro Satau.
The biggest of ancient Egypt's pyramids is the Great Pyramid of Giza, built by the Pharaoh Khufu, Cheops. The architect was Himyunu, a relative of the pharaoh and a priest of the god Thoth. Under his direction, the Great Pyramid was built over a period of 20 years. The second highest pyramid also stands on the Giza Plateau, south of the Great Pyramid. It was built for the pharaoh Khafra, a descendant of Khufu. Khafra, whose name means appearing like Ra, based his rule on the priests of Ra in Heliopolis, but prepared for his meeting with the god Osiris by building the Great Pyramid and Mortuary Complex. It is believed that the statue of the Great Sphinx was carved from the rocks of the Giza Plateau with the face of Khafra. South of Khafra's Great Pyramid, a third pyramid was built for the pharaoh Menkara, Mykerinos which is greatly inferior in size compared to the neighboring pyramids on the Giza Plateau. Menkara, the son of Khafra, rushed to complete the pyramid before his death, but its construction was eventually finished by his son. With this pyramid, the epic of building grandiose tombs comes to an end in ancient Egypt. The giant pyramids on the Giza Plateau, erected by ancient Egyptians, are counted as one of the wonders of the world. They served as monuments to the god Ra, whose cult was practiced by the priests in Heliopolis. Starting with the pharaohs of the 4th dynasty, all rulers of ancient Egypt claimed their descent from the great god Ra, the ruler of the heavens. In addition, many researchers have noted a strange coincidence with the stars in the belt of Orion, which is associated with Osiris, and the placement of the pyramids in the necropolis in Giza. The last pharaoh of the fourth dynasty, Shepseskaf, refused to build a stone pyramid like the ones his predecessors had built, and instead erected a large mastaba. But the first pharaoh of the 5th dynasty, Userkaf, built a small pyramid in Saqqara. Similar pyramids were built by subsequent pharaohs. They all exalted the cult of Ra, headed by the priests of Heliopolis. The last pharaoh of the 5th dynasty, Unas, built a pyramid in Saqqara near Djoser's mortuary complex. For the first time, the walls inside the chamber of Unas's pyramid were adorned with magical hieroglyphs. Later, these pyramid texts became an essential feature for a pharaoh's tomb. According to the texts, pharaohs, as sons of the god Ra, had a divine essence. Pharaohs received divine power from the god Horus. 
After death, they merged with Osiris and entered the underworld, Duat, in the celestial constellation of Orion. In ancient mythology, the god Osiris becomes the lord of the underworld Duat, towering over Sokar, god of the Memphis necropolis, and Kentiamenti, god of the Abydos necropolis. In the Middle Kingdom, Duat was accessible to the courtiers who surrounded the pharaoh. The pyramid texts became the coffin texts, written on the inside of coffins. Magical incantations from the coffin texts dating from the 17th century BC were added to the papyrus scrolls known as the Book of the Dead. According to this book, the god Ra governed the world of the living and the god Osiris ruled the underworld Duat, which was located both in the heavens and beneath the ground. Ancient Egyptians believed that a person had several entities. A person possessed the spiritual counterpart Ka, which is life force. Ba was a person's soul, taking the form of a bird with the head of a living person. Another important element was the name of a person, which determined his destiny and was known as Ren. There was also the shadow, Shout. Only the enlightened spirit Ak could travel in the underworld. In order for a spirit to exist in the underworld, it was necessary to preserve the mummy of the dead person for as long as possible. Ancient Egyptians lived on average until they were 35. Therefore, they had to lead a life free from sin and prepare for their rebirth in the underworld. After death, the relatives of the deceased gave the corpse to the embalmers, who washed the body in the sacred waters of the Nile. Then the embalmers removed all the internal organs, except for the heart, which was believed to be the location of the soul in a person's body. The organs were placed in special containers, canopic jars. After that, the body was covered with a special salt, natron, to dry it. After drying, the body cavity was filled with flax strips, or sand. The embalmers covered the body with special resin to protect it from exposure. Next, the body was wrapped in flax strips together with amulets. The priest read spells and the mummy received the essence of Sa. For kings, the mummification process took 60 days, the same length of time it took the goddess Isis to mummify Osiris. The mummy of the deceased was taken to its tomb on the western bank of the Nile. The coffin was escorted by priests, women mourning, and men with goods for the dead. 
Statues of Shabti were laid next to the coffin to serve the dead person in Duat. The opening of the mouth ritual was an important ceremony. The coffin was placed vertically and the priests touched an adzi to the lips and eyes of the deceased so that he would be able to speak, see, and eat in the other world. The coffins of prosperous dead people were placed in a mastaba tomb built in the necropolis, incorporating streets and quarters. A deep pit led to an underground chamber where the coffins were left. In the above-ground area of the tomb, a false door was mounted in the western wall. The Ak, Ka, and Ba of the dead could enter the afterlife and return through the door. The Ka spirit double of the dead was always in the tomb near the mummy's casket, guarding the false door and eating offerings. Trying to get to Osiris, the deceased would go to the gates of the underworld, which were protected by deities. The pylons of temples in ancient Egypt were reproductions of these gates from the underworld. Arriving in Duat, the deceased faced various dangers, attacks by snakes, crocodiles, and other frightening creatures. Only knowledge of the spells from the Book of the Dead could save them from these perils. Eventually, at midnight, the deceased entered the Hall of the Two Truths under the escort of the jackal-headed god Anubis. The deceased brought a declaration of innocence before the group of gods, in which he denied committing any sins in his life. At this time, Anubis set up scales with the heart of the deceased on the left and the ostrich feather belonging to the goddess of truth Mat on the right. He then checked the results. The god Thoth, with the head of an ibis bird, was ready to record the result of the weighing of the heart. If the heart was light, the monster Amet would devour it, and this would cause the person's second death. If the scales balanced, this meant the deceased hadn't deceived the gods when making the Declaration of Innocence. After successfully completing the test, the god Horus presented the deceased to Osiris. In the presence of his sisters, the goddesses Isis and Nephthys, Osiris granted the deceased a place in the fields of reeds for the eternal blessed afterlife in Duat. The truth-speaking deceased, having received the blessing of Osiris, could settle in the fields of reeds, which can be compared to the Elysian fields of the ancient Greeks. The deceased managed the fields with the help of their shabtis, brewed beer, and lived in comfort. According to mythology, every night the main god Ra moved across Duat from west to east. Any truth-speaking deceased could join him and travel in his boat. During this journey, the gods Ra and Osiris met and merged into one united whole. As a result, they were both rejuvenated and able to live forever.
In the morning, the sun god Ra emerged in the east and took on the form of the scarab beetle Kepri. During the day, Ra acquired his true form. In the evening at sunset in the west, Ra took the form of the ancient creator god, Atom, and then went into Duat from west to east in the form of Ra Harakti. In the sacred place at Abydos, pharaohs built their own funerary temples dedicated to the Egyptian gods, especially Osiris. A pharaoh from the 19th dynasty, Seti I, started to build Men Mat Ra, but it was his son, Ramses the Great, who finished construction of this grand temple, which impresses visitors to this day. Before entering the temple, Egyptians had to pass through two pylons which divided two large courtyards. In the first courtyard, the visitor had to wash himself so that he could stand before the gods spiritually cleansed. In front of the temple's shrine were two hypostyle halls, on the walls of which were reliefs depicting the pharaoh of Men Mat Ra worshipping the gods of the ancient Egyptian pantheon. Passing through a forest of stone columns, visitors came closer to the shrine, located on a slope just after the hypostyle halls. The shrine was dedicated to the main ancient Egyptian gods of the New Kingdom, Amun-Ra, Ptah of Memphis, Ra Harakti, Osiris, Isis, Horus, and the deified pharaoh Seti I himself. All the sacred chapels, including the chapel of Amun-Ra, had a false door through which the god's spirit traveled to the afterworld and returned to a statue standing in the chapel. But the Osiris Chapel didn't have a false door. Instead, it was possible to go through the chapel to a complex devoted to the cult of Osiris, consisting of several halls and chambers. The Hall of Statues was the most ancient place in the funerary temple, built in the ruins of a sacral temple. Here, pilgrims carried out rituals and performed magic spells to honor the lord of the world of the dead. From the Hall of Statues, it was possible to cross the first Osiris Hall of Columns to the shrines of the Abydos Triad, Osiris, Isis, and Horus. In the center of the northern shrines is a shrine to Osiris. On the relief, the main scene is an image of Osiris embracing Isis. The god presents the pharaoh with a symbol of life and rebirth, the Ankh key. On the side walls in the shrine to Osiris are scenes of the pharaoh's preparations to meet with the lord of the underworld and receive divine status. Next to Osiris's shrine is the shrine to Isis. On the relief, the main scene shows an image of the goddess accompanied by Horus, 
giving the pharaoh symbols of a million-year rule. On the reliefs on the side walls are scenes of the pharaoh worshipping Isis and bringing her gifts and offerings. Isis defended the pharaoh against Osiris and Horus. To one side of the shrine to Osiris is the shrine to his son, the god Horus. The main image in the shrine shows Horus, accompanied by Isis, giving the pharaoh symbols of a king's power. On the side walls of the shrine, the pharaoh is shown worshipping Horus and his father Osiris. On the walls of the Hall of Columns, reliefs depict scenes from different myths. The Jed Pillar is one of the distinguishing features connected to Osiris. The Jed Pillar provided protection for Osiris and those around him, including the Pharaoh, from enemies and evil spirits. In the funerary temple of Seti I, all kings who had ruled Egypt were under the protection of Osiris. In one of the chambers is a list of 76 rulers, starting with Menes, who had governed before Seti I. Here the pharaoh's son, Prince Ramses, is shown hunting. It was Ramses who finished building the temple. In this temple are strange hieroglyphs showing modern technology. A plane, a helicopter, a tank, and a submarine. North of Seti I's temple are the ruins of his son Ramses II's funerary temple. Columns with sculptures of Osiris flank the courtyard in front of the temple. The large granite entrance rises above the surrounding ruins. The temple of Ramses II was richly decorated with reliefs depicting worship of the gods. First and foremost was Osiris, ruler of the underworld. Not only was Osiris worshipped in the chambers of the shrines, but also the gods Amun-Ra, Thoth, Min, and others. In this temple, granite sculptures of Osiris, Amun-Ra, Isis, and the deified Ramses II himself were found. At the back of the funerary temple of Seti I are the ruins of the most cryptic temple in Abydos. It's one of the oldest stone temples in ancient Egypt, named Osirion by Egyptologists in honor of Osiris. It is located in a trench cut into the limestone platform of the desert at a depth of 15 meters below the temple of Seti I. The excavation of the temple began at the start of the 20th century, 
overseen by the archaeologists Petri and Murray. The first people to investigate Osirian believed that it was built to celebrate the mysteries of Osiris. In the central hall of the Osirian temple, granite pillars were erected which supported a roof of granite blocks. The platform the pillars were set on represents the primeval island rising out of the waters of chaos, according to the teachings of ancient Egyptians about the origins of the world. The entrance to the central hall was separated from the platform by a channel filled with water. The main way to enter Osirian was through an underground tunnel. Egyptologists suggest that the underground tunnel and chambers in front of the entrance to Osirian were built much later than the central hall of pillars, at the time of the New Kingdom. It's possible that in ancient times there were statues of gods used for the mysteries of Osiris set in the recesses of the central hall. The recesses were also separated from the platform in the center of the hall by the channel of water. According to legends, a secret chamber lay behind the northeastern wall of Osirian, where the head of Osiris was said to be buried. Osirian was an underground temple. It was covered by hills. The Egyptologist Neville thought that Osirian had ancient origins as it was built from granite blocks weighing many tons and had ascetic forms. Osirian is older than the neighboring funerary temple of Seti I. Osirian bears a strong similarity to the Valley Temple of Khafre on the Giza Plateau, near the Sphinx. It's possible that they belong to the same period of the Old Kingdom. The Valley Temple, like Osirian, was made from heavy granite blocks in such a way that there are small gaps between the blocks. Like at Osirian, outside the granite walls are lined with blocks of sandstone. The multi-ton granite covering of the valley temple, resting on the granite columns, served as the base for the roof which might have been made from granite blocks. As with Osirian, in the Valley Temple, the granite blocks were laid in a complex way. Nowadays, Osirian attracts many pilgrims who meditate in the ruins of the temple and offer prayers to the ancient god Osiris.
Strange pictures are found on the pillars, the so-called sacred images of the Flower of Life. Many people believe that the Flower of Life represents a plan showing the origin of life in this world. The ruins of Osirion and the mystery around them serve as a reminder that at the dawn of humanity, people turn to the ancient god Osiris to grant them a blessed life in the netherworld.